Welcome to How to Talk to Kids About Anything with Dr. Robin Silverman, a podcast loaded with practical tips, powerful scripts, personal stories, and simple steps to make even the toughest conversations easier. So get ready to get the information you need to make the impact you want from someone you trust, your friend, parenting expert, Dr. Robin Silverman. Hello and welcome to How to Talk to Kids About Anything, where we give you the tips, scripts, stories, and steps to make even the toughest conversations easier. I'm so honored to be your host, Dr. Robin Silverman, Child and Teen Development Specialist, author and speaker, and most importantly, parent of two great kids who give me the opportunity to love, learn, and grow every single day, whether I want to or not. Believe me, I get it. It's not always easy, but we're in this together and we have some great people helping us along the way. Now, Peter Shankman is a spectacular example of what happens when you find the best traits of ADHD and work really hard to make them benefit you. Diagnosed at seven years old with a sit down, you're disrupting the class disease. Peter wasn't formally diagnosed with ADHD until his mid thirties. By that time, however, he'd started and sold two companies and realized that all the differences that formally labeled him as a troublemaker were actually his greatest assets. After Peter sold his third company, Help a Reporter Out, he decided to focus on really understanding this faster brain of his and learning exactly what it could do. From that, the Faster Than Normal podcast and best-selling book were born. Peter believes that everyone has gifts, potential, and abilities far beyond what society has deemed normal and strives to help those people bring out the gifts to life. In so many people, in kids who have ADHD, he does this through podcasts and books and online videos and countless worldwide speaking appearances. We're so blessed to get this insider's view on what it's like to have ADHD, be wildly successful with ADHD, and how to manage your responsibilities, your deadlines, your environment, your diet, many other areas of life when you have ADHD, using it as a gift, not a curse. So I would just encourage you, listen up, parents, coaches, and educators. This is surely going to be an interesting interview. Thank you so much, Peter Shankman, for joining us on How to Talk to Kids About Anything. Pleasure is mine. Glad to be here. So before we get into the meat of the matter, for those who haven't had the opportunity to read your book or see you speak, can you tell us what gets you up in the morning and how you got so interested in focus, productivity, success, and the secrets of the ADHD brain? Yeah, I mean, for me, it was really about understanding that I had this, this, you know, what a lot of people call the curse, and yet I was able to do so much, and still am able to do so much. So obviously, somewhere there's a benefit here, right? The key is to figure out what it is, and the key is also to figure out how to use it to the best of my ability without uh, the negatives of it sort of coming out and, and rearing their ugly head. You know, it's easy to, to, to enjoy the good sides. The key is to also figure out a way to avoid the bad sides. Mm, I see. I see. Well, you say in your book, Faster Than Normal, that you love your ADHD brain and that it is indeed a gift, not a curse. One of the keys you talk about is embracing the positives and turning the negatives into positives. So can you tell us how you can look at ADHD as a gift in our children and how we can help them to turn negatives into positives? So for me, you know, <clears throat> I knew because I was different and because I had this faster brain after my second company, I realized there's gotta be other people like me, right. Who have this, uh, uh, talent, whatever you want to call it, this, this, this gift. Um, you know, the problem is, is that we're not groomed to think of it as such, you know, in school, uh, we're told to sit down just like everyone else. Stop being different. You know, it, 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 it can be a problem. And, and that is an issue because we have a lot of, kids who are being told essentially that they're broken, right? That they're different, that there's something wrong with them. And, you know, th that's not really a good thing. We don't want to be telling kids that, that their creativity, their imagination, their, their supersized brain, their speed, all those things, we don't want to be telling them those are negatives. And we really have to start focusing on being able to uh, let them understand that those are positives. And there are so many good things they can do with those brains as long as they know how to use them, how to drive them, how to work them, how to, how to make them uh, benefit their, their brains. You know, I remember being told by teachers that, you know, if I didn't learn to be quiet, who, who was ever going to pay me to talk all day? And yet, I'm, yet here I am getting, you know, ridiculous amounts of money to keynote conferences all around the world. So, you know, there's benefit there. There really mm -hmm. is. 
Mm. You make the analogy regarding a diet of candy and chocolate in your book that if you ate chocolate every day, having another piece wouldn't be a big deal for you. But if you only got it every once in a while, it's a big yummy boost. And you equate this with ADHD and how kids and adults with ADHD don't get enough adrenaline and serotonin. And so when there is a rush of these chemicals into the body from like a good run in the park or some kind of risk taking like skydiving, it's like that piece of chocolate that gives you a big boost. So I want you to tell us a little bit more about this sort of supercharge and how it makes people with ADHD more creative. For kids, it really comes down to what do they enjoy doing? What do they love to do? What do they want to do? What's fun for them, right? And if they can do these fun things, you know, can they, you know, how can you channel that into their advantage? So for instance, um, do they love to run, right? Well, if they love to run, make sure they're doing some running right before they go, they go and sit down and do their homework because they're going to have that dopamine in their head. They're going to be able to focus longer. They're going to be able to focus harder, stronger, right? Make sure they understand what they're doing and how they're, they'll understand what they're doing and how they're doing it better. On the flip side, if you only force, if you force them to do what they hate before they get to do what they enjoy, they have a much harder time putting two and two together because they're sitting there and they're already starved for dopamine, starved for adrenaline, starved for, 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 um, uh, uh, dopamine, uh, I'm trying to think of the three, dopamine. And serotonin. Yeah, serotonin, thank you. Yeah. That, you know, they're already starved for the three, so now you're telling them, okay, you can't do anything until you do your homework. Well, they're just going to sit there and, and, well, I need something to excite me, something to get me to focus. Well, that's what that, you know, when I was a kid, my parents told me, no music while you're studying. Well, it turns out music is a great way to produce uh, adrenaline and dopamine, serotonin, if you like what you're listening to. So it was sort of the antithesis of that. Mm -hmm. So interesting. Okay. And so that's what kind of can help with those boring, monotonous tasks that our kids need to do. And I'm just thinking of my son who loves rock music and yes, absolutely winds up like playing air guitar. Um, so I think that that would probably be helpful. I know that everybody right now is probably thinking about New Year's resolutions. It's the sort of the thing to do. But one of your tips to people, which certainly can be used with kids, is to use rituals, not resolutions. In fact, you say rituals are sort of like the holy grail for people with ADHD. So tell us about why these are so important and what your rules are for making rituals. Yeah, problem with the resolutions is resolutions fail. Resolutions, I'm going to lose 30 pounds, you know, and then you, you, you go and you, you don't. Right. And in a week later, you're like, well, I haven't lost any pounds yet. This obviously failed. Let's go eat everything. You know, yeah. at least that's what I do. Um, the flip side of that is a ritual. The ritual is I'm going to focus on uh, being a little bit healthier and going to the gym three times a week this week. And I'm going to do that for four times this month. And all of a sudden you've done it 12 times. The weight's starting to come off. You have a, you have something you're doing every day. That's a ritual. You're now building a ritual. That's mm -hmm. the key. That's what you want to be able to do. You don't worry. Don't worry about, um, Resolutions. Resolutions fail. Rituals succeed. I see. So in combination with the one that we were just talking about, you may have a ritual to do <clears throat> your homework after school every day, but first you're going to, you know, listen to your favorite song or you're first, you're going to run around the block and then you're going to do your homework and you're going to do this four times a week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And exactly then you have that in play. Yeah, okay. Rituals succeed. Rituals succeed. I like that. So let's shift our attention to overall health and well-being for someone with ADHD. I'm talking about food, exercise, sleep, organizing, and decluttering your environment for health and success, something you talk about in your book. So how do these things play a role in the health and well-being for someone with ADHD? And what tips do you have for those who are listening about how we need to work with our kids about uh, on those types of things. Yeah, one of the first things I'd recommend, you have to understand that food uh, is mandatory, right? Good, healthy, good food, not crap food. Essentially, you know, eat like crap, you're gonna feel like crap, you're gonna work like crap, all that stuff. You wanna focus on being able to eat really healthy food. Um, my rule is sort of, what I try to stick by is if my grandmother wouldn't have recognized it as food back in like 1910, I try not to eat it. Mm. Um, another way to think about that is, you know, if you're, if you're going shopping in the grocery store, stick to the outside of the store. The outside aisles, uh, that's where all the fresh and perishable stuff are. The inside, stu the inside aisles is like where the Twinkies are that live for like 400 years. <laughs> you don't want to put stuff in your body that lives for 400 years. It's just nothing good has ever come of that. So, yeah. you know, you want to ask yourself, what can I eat that makes me feel better? Um, I believe in the apple test, which is, oh, I'm starving. I'm going to get some chips. Well, do I want this apple? No. Okay. Then you're not really starving. 
Mm, so right. So that's a, that's a big, that's a big point right there. Right. And then what about the exercise and sleep areas? I get approximately uh, eight hours of sleep a night as much as I can. I tend to go to sleep around um, 8.30 every night, and I'm usually up by just before four. Wow. People think I'm crazy, but that's how I get my work done. If I, if I didn't have that time super early in the morning for myself, I would not be able to focus. I would not be able to get my, um, my uh, uh, exercise in and I wouldn't have as good of a day. So the key for me is to be able to focus on having as good of a day as possible, doing what I can do to create the best days I can have and doing that as much as I possibly can. So, yeah. so some of those rituals that I've created to do that, I focus on getting as much sleep as I can, but then I also do things to avoid having to question what I want to do. I eat, I sleep in my gym clothes. Mm. Um, people think that's crazy, but sleeping in my gym clothes means that I don't have to think about working out in the morning. I simply go and do it. Mm. Mm. Eliminate choice. I'm a huge, huge, huge believer in eliminating as much choice as possible. How do you think knowing that information would have impacted you as a child if you knew about your need to kind of get up really early in the morning and your need to exercise, your need to go to sleep early or uh, eat certain foods. How do you think that would have impacted you? You know, I think it would have changed a lot. But then on the flip side, you know, I, I want to, maybe I wouldn't have paid attention. Hmm. You know, the key is things happen for a reason. They happen when they do. For me, it's about understanding what works now, not worrying about what would have worked last time or later or whatever, but understanding what works now and just doing as much of that as possible as much as I can. All right. Not blaming, also, I'd say not blaming myself for not understanding it earlier. Right, right. I'm, I'm, I think I'm trying to get in on the how we can kind of get our kids to get on board with this because what you're talking about, the kind of avoiding the, the chips, the eating, you know, eating healthier, making sure that we're doing things for our bodies, exercising, getting more sleep are the keys to, you know, the kids pushing back often. So I'm trying to get to the idea of what might motivate a child who has ADHD to get on board with some of these things so that they can be healthier and they have a more good sense of well-being. One of the first things I would say is I'd start looking for the, the premise of what uh, it's not so much about, don't frame it as going to sleep earlier. For, you know, for me, I don't think of it as going to bed at 830. I think of it as being able to wake up super early to start my next day and be awesome at that. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So it's about what, what you want to be able to do as best you can do it. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay. Got it. If you frame it as, Oh, you have to go to bed early. You know, what kid in their right mind is going to say that's cool, you know? Right. And who says like, oh, yeah, I love eat, uh, eating apples instead of, of course. You know, the yummy. So talking about Twinkies, um, my <laughs> kids, <laughs> as well as any children with ADHD, do like indulging often. So they'll sit in front of a screen, play video. You know, they'll want to sit in front of a screen, play video games for hours on end if nobody interferes, okay, if we didn't have rules. And you make a really interesting point in your book about free will, like not really being free for people with ADHD. Specifically, you say, when you're blessed with ADHD, but you are also blessed with free will, you simply have to employ some systems for handling the two. Otherwise, you'll never tap your full potential. So you have right. some rules to help you live your best life. So can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, for me, I have, I have certain, I call them elimination of choice. So I have certain ways that I am able to uh, prevent myself from doing things. Um, for instance, like I said, I sleep in my gym clothes. That prevents me from coming up with an excuse not to work out. I'm already dressed. I might as well just do it. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, I don't keep certain foods in the house because I'm going to eat them. Sure. You know, um, my lights all work on a timer. The second, uh, they're all digital. You know, when a certain time comes, 3.45 a.m., whatever, the lights go on. Mm. And I'm awake. It's a lot harder to go back to sleep when your lights are on. Mm, good point. Wow. Yes, that should be very helpful. I can only imagine what that might. My, my kids, even when you open the, the, the blinds in the morning, they're like, put them down. You no, know? My daughter's <laughs> blinds go up automatically at 6.50 a.m. That gives her about 10 to 15 minutes to wake up gradually. Never have a problem. 
and they go they they, they go up on their own. Yeah, they're, they're automatically set. They're they're made, they're they're uh, they live on the internet. I love this. This is happening. My kids will hate you, but I am definitely <laughs> doing this. Thank you for that. I, I'm just taking that tidbit away right away. <laughs> okay, perfect. So one of the areas that tend to be of great frustration for parents, teachers, and kids with ADHD is homework and things that you have to get done in a timely fashion. You talk about deadlines and how to learn to unenjoy something while dealing with triggers that can take you off track. So tell us the insider secrets on how to help kids learn to use deadlines to their advantage and deal with these triggers, as you say, to unenjoy something until it's done. So look, I hate math. Mm. Okay. You and many math. other kids. Right. Hate math with a passion. Never been a fan. Not my, not my area of expertise, although I tell my kids math exactly. is awesome. So Love. <laughs> what can I do to create a lesser horrible experience? Mm. Right? Maybe I'll work for 20 minutes and then take a break. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll get this, this page of problems done, go ride my bike for a half hour, come back and do the second page of problems. Mm -hmm. Right? Whatever it is, what is, the, what is the thing you can do to make the thing you have to do seem less unappealing? Mm -hmm. So what's, what are some things that we can do? Like what is your, what is your way of un getting through something you unenjoy? So I do a lot better when I'm in a clean and precise environment, right? Okay, tell so, us about that. So I, I consider it, I don't consider it a, um, a, uh, a splurge to hire a cleaning person. Mm -hmm. I consider it mandatory. Mm -hmm. I come home, my apartment's clean, my office is clean, whatever. I'm much more apt to get work done. Um, on the flip side, you know, my assistant might say, Peter, you have um, four expense reports you have to get me or we're not going to get paid. I'm like, okay, I'll get them soon. She's like, well, here's the thing. I'm not scheduling anything in your calendar for the next week. You want to make some money? You better get those done or else you're just literally not going to have anything to do. I'm like, okay, crap. Okay, let's go do them. So that's more of a, a fear-based scenario and it mm -hmm. works. Mm -hmm. But other things might be, okay, Peter, I know you want to go skydiving. So Megan, my, my assistant might say, Peter, I won't schedule anything after 10 a.m. on Tuesday if you get me all those reports by Monday night. Get me the reports by Monday night. You're free to go skydiving all day Tuesday. Go have fun. Mm. Right? Yeah. So she's giving me incentive to mm -hmm. do what I need to do when it, before I need to do it. Okay. Awesome. No, that's really good. And so we can use some of those incentives with our kids and, and understanding that you got to buckle down. The flip, side and, of that, the flip side of that might be something like, okay, I have two pages of math homework. Let me, like I said, let me get one side done and then I'll go do something that I enjoy for 20 minutes. That'll give me the dopamine as a bonus and I'll go do the other side. Okay. That dopamine boost is really important for the kids with ADHD. And I think that's no sometimes not something that we really focus on. We just say, get it done, get it done. Yep. So this is a really important idea. So give us some tools or life hacks that you absolutely love that have helped you stay on task and organize that you think will be great for kids too. Well, for kids, I mean, it really, a lot of comes down to writing it down. If I don't write things down, they do not get done. Mm -hmm. So it is mandatory that I write things down. Mm -hmm. uh, if I don't write things down, things don't happen. So I tend to do that. That goes without saying. Um, I would also suggest that it is a, uh, you know, be, being able to, again, what you're eating, what you're doing, give yourself time in the morning to not be rushed around and crazy and trying to get things done. You know, give yourself a little extra time to get things done so you, so you can get up a little early. You have a half an hour before school starts before you have to leave, for the, leave the house, whatever, where you're not going crazy. Mm -hmm. I personally love that those last 30 minutes before I go to school or before I go to, school, before I go to work where I can just chill in my apartment, right? Hang out with my kid, hang out with my cat, whatever, before things go crazy and say, okay, I'm good. Things are, things are working. Things are not too insane. So you have everything done before that half an hour, like bags that's packed? One, that's, that's one of the reasons I get up as early as I do. Okay. So every, like you are able to walk out the door, but you have an extra half an hour. Right. And I'm not freaked out. I'm not worried. I'm calm. I have everything I need. I haven't forgotten anything. Okay. I've had that that's time. important for us to keep in mind because, you know, mornings are not always easy, you know, when you have kids. And they could be a lot easier, again, if you just, if you take that time to sort of wake up and you know, give yourself that extra, that extra little bonus. Mm -hmm. Good point. 
What's one thing you really want parents with kids to know, uh, with kids who have ADHD to know? The hands down most important thing is to understand that your kids are not broken. They are not um, uh, 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 on the island of misfit toys. You know, they're different. Different can be amazing. If you mm-hmm. understand how to use different, different can be amazing. Mm-hmm. Know that you have a, you have a, um, you know, you have a faster brain. So because of that, it's like having a faster car. If you don't know how to drive your faster car, you could very easily smack into a tree. But if you do know how to drive it, what you can do is mind blowing. You can, you can drive faster than anyone else. And what do you wish teachers would know about kids with ADHD? They're not sitting there plotting how to interrupt your class. They're not sitting there plotting how to disrupt your day. They're not doing any, anything like that. Their goal is simply, they're trying to learn. They're just trying to learn in their own way because that's, that's the only way they know how. All right, we come to the point where I would love your top tip, your top tip for parents, educators, coaches, to make sure that they're helping kids with ADHD to reach their potential. The best possible piece of advice I can give is listen to the child instead of automatically assuming you know better what the kid wants listen to them listen get them for as long as it takes them to talk listen to them they're going to tell you things about them that you might not have ever have known sit down listen look them in the eye and i think i had my parents on my podcast and faster than normal for the their the, my 100th episode and i said how do you guys how did we survive Mm. I, was, I was not an easy kid. How did we survive? And, and they both just said, we never stopped loving you. And we made sure you always knew that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because when you have a child who, you know, who, who f- seems like, you know, there's always the extra effort you need to put in because they don't always go with the, with the, the groove and that they don't always get things done in the way that you would imagine them. Just because they're doing something that works for them and it doesn't work for you doesn't mean they're wrong. Right. Right. So, you know, that allow them to get up, allow them to run around the block. Allow oh, them. To- I mean, the best, I, I, I have standing meetings. I refuse to sit down during a meeting. Mm-hmm. Okay. Which is funny because what, what does a kid get uh, the message of, but you, you need to sit down. You need to sit down exactly. at the dinner table. You need exactly. to sit down in, this, in school. You need to sit down to do your homework. You need to sit down. Yeah. No question about it. Yeah. Give us the resource of the week. Where can people go to get more information about you and all that you do? Podcast at fasterthenormal.com. Um, and my life is at shankman.com. I'm at Peter Shankman on all the socials. And um, I, I answer every email. I answer every tweet. Feel free to reach out to me. I I'm, I'm, love talking about this stuff. Awesome. Well, I want to thank you so much uh, for your insights and your strategies on ADHD and the ADHD brain and kids with ADHD. I I love what you said about really embracing them where they are and making sure that they know that they're loved and that different is, can be really, really good if we choose to see them that way. I just really appreciate your perspective. That was my pleasure. I'm happy to do it. Well, I've got my takeaways and sweet friends. I know you have yours. Let's discuss them. Come up on the Dr. Robin Silverman page or on twitter.com slash Dr. Robin. We got the Facebook page at Dr. Robin Silverman, drrobinsilverman.com, and also on Instagram at Dr. Robin Silverman. And if you love this podcast like I did, I hope you'll go up to iTunes and rate and review it so other people can hear about Peter Shankman and his solutions to ADHD, the ADHD brain, and understanding how we can embrace this child, where they are, what they're doing, and help them to shine because they've got incredible potential. That's all the time we have for today. My fellow parents, leaders, and educators, thank you so much for tuning in to How to Talk to Kids About Anything. For more information on books, articles, speaking engagements, or curriculum, please visit drrobinsilverman.com. So many great podcasts up there. Show notes are up there as well. And I look forward to weathering the storms and enjoying the sunny side of life together. And please remember, even on the days when you fall short, you've got this. I know you've been listening to this podcast and you might be thinking in your mind, I've asked them to sit down. I asked them, no, you cannot do that. But you're here and you're getting the information you need. I know it's not easy, but never forget there's always tomorrow. Parenting is the ultimate do-over. I see you. I'm right there with you.
And as there are moments when we doubt our know-how, our choices, and our sweet sanity, please know you're 10 times the parent you think you are. Until next time, this is Dr. Robin Silverman with How to Talk to Kids About Anything. Please tune in again and keep connecting through conversation. See you next week. You've been listening to How to Talk to Kids About Anything with Dr. Robin Silverman. For more information on books, articles, speaking engagements, or curriculum, please visit drrobinsilverman.com.